Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. It's 10 years since the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan, and U.S. policy seems to be rather confused, to say the least. One of the critical points that President Obama made when he came to office about how he was going to handle the Afghan war was he was going to somehow broker a peace deal between Pakistan and India over Kashmir, which would free up Pakistani troops to go to the northwest territories of Pakistan and fight Taliban forces. Well, that didn't last very long. Now joining us to talk about the history of this 10 years to some extent in terms of U.S.-Pakistan relations and the current situation is Munazi Jangahir. Munazi is a special correspondent for Express TV, and she hosts her own show on Express called Question Time Pakistan. Thanks very much for joining us, Munazi. Thank you, Paul, for having me. So uh, just if we quickly dip back just over three years ago, he was going to deal with the Afghan situation through this brokering of a deal. Uh, none of that came to pass. Uh, so talk a little bit about that and, and the current st state of U.S. Uh, policy in Afghanistan. Well, I feel uh, that President Obama's uh, Afghanistan strategy when he started out seemed to be that it would be different. That they were, it seemed to Pakistan and Afghanistan that there would be more reconciliation. And there was a lot of hope when U.S. Secretary uh, Hillary Clinton came in because she is viewed in the region as somebody who understands not just uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, but also India. Therefore, there was a lot of hope pinned on to this administration, but it seems that foreign policy is beyond the control of one particular administration, whether that be uh, the Democrats or whether that be the Republicans. At the moment, President Obama seems to be a, more of a hardliner in some ways. Uh, for example, there have been more drone attacks in the northwest of Pakistan, and he has been very uh, clear in his policy that where, wherever there are going to be insurgents, the U.S. is going to have uh, operations against them. For the first time in Pakistan's history, we saw boots on the ground with the Osama bin Laden operation. So in some ways, he has taken a more harsh stance. But what he has done, which is appreciated here, is that Obama administration has distanced itself from the Pakistan army, which the Bush administration was seen to be very closely linked to, and has uh, spearheaded, initiated reforms and, and a relationship with the civilian leadership. And that has certainly been welcomed here uh, in Pakistan. When uh, Admiral Mike Mullen recently made these comments where he directly uh, accused the ISI, really, of being connected to the Haqqani network, um, he accused the ISI of being involved in the murder of the journalist Salim Shahzad. Um, the, they universally, more or less, the American Armed Forces and Intelligence and Mullen again said that the uh, Pakistan Army and ISI in some way were protecting bin Laden. Um, we were told recently that, it, in fact, it was having a counter effect, uh, that Pakistani public opinion and political forces were actually uniting against this American pressure. Um, is that true? Well, to a certain extent, it is true, because after uh, Admiral Mike Mullen made those statements saying that the Haqqani network is a veritable arm of the ISI, there was an immediate core commanders meeting. The generals got together and, and uh, they had a huge meeting. Of course, what happened in that, what transpired in that meeting was never made public, but Immediately after that meeting, there was uh, an all-parties conference called by the Prime Minister and chaired by the Prime Minister, and it was attended by all the parties across Pakistan. Some of the nationalists, like the Baloch nationalists, did not attend the meeting, but by and large, most parties, including the opposition, who is now very critical of this government, also attended the meeting. And they uh, uh, came up with a joint resolution which clearly said that Pakistan's sovereignty must be respected, that we respect our armed forces, and we do not appreciate... Uh, the kind of criticism and the finger pointing that the U.S. has done. And in fact, the prime minister went on record and said that the policy of do more must stop. So yes, the civilian leadership stood uh, side by side by its military re leadership. Having said that, there was a lot of very harsh criticism of the military in this in this meeting. Uh, it was a closed door meeting, so the media was not really given access to the information of uh, what really happened in the meeting, what transpired there. 
But um, our sources and very reliable sources tell us that the opposition leader uh, of the PMLN, uh, he leads the party called the PMLN, Mia Nawaz Sharif, was very critical of the Pakistan army. And in fact, he was quoted as saying that there has to be something there. The world is pointing fingers towards you. It is not without reason. So he questioned the army chief. He questioned uh, uh, the ISI chief. And it was very clear that uh, the uh, government in so many ways was not on the same page as the uh, intelligence agencies, as the military in our country. And it, it's no secret that foreign policy for many years and many decades in Pakistan has been led and crafted by the army. So uh, the civilian leadership does try and exert itself, but it has this particular government has been very, very weak and incompetent in, in leading uh, uh, foreign policy. This government came in saying they want peaceful relations with Afghanistan and with India. But we have seen over the, over the past few years, whenever there have been skirmishes or when there have, ever, there have been tensions between the two countries, it's always the military leadership that has led the civilian leadership uh, in this particular case. The analysts here and, and sort of Washington, D.C. pundits, military pundits, the, the, the general view seems to be that Pakistan is really just preparing for a U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and by preparing, it means, again, thinking that the Taliban or some section of it will be an ally of the Pakistan military, and, and they would like to see the Taliban have more power in a post-U.S. Afghanistan. So that there's sort of a contradiction in, in objectives here between Pakistan and the U.S., which also leaves the American exit strategy somewhat up in the air, because if supposedly the U.S. can get out only under conditions where Afghan, the current Afghan regime has somehow taken over security and stabilized the situation, uh, then, then, then the U.S. can't get out because Pakistan's not cooperating. That's, that's the view, I would say, mostly in Washington. What, what's your take on that? Well, it's an unfair view what analysts in Pakistan say and what the pa Pakistani administration says, whether it's the establishment which we, by which we mean the army or whether that's the civilian leadership. What they say is that the U.S. has failed, miserably failed in Afghanistan, and that's not far from the truth. The U.S. has been unable to uh, uh, establish any kind of uh, civilian leadership or bring about a civilian leadership in Afghanistan. Uh, the, you know, the institutions that uh, uh, make democracy stronger are not there. There are no um, political parties or let's say strong political parties in Afghanistan. They have not uh, strengthened the judiciary in Afghanistan or the media in Afghanistan. So the ingredients for a full-fledged democracy are not there and the U.S. has certainly not helped. Now that they are speaking to the Taliban, we'll hear not just from Pakistan uh, women rights group, but also in Afghanistan women, women rights groups are saying, well, you're speaking to the same people who took away our rights, who, who denied us of our basic rights. So really why did you come in? And I remember when the U.S. invaded Afghanistan, one of the things that the Bush administration said that we are going to free women. And the first pictures that were flashed in the United States was of girls going to school. So they are today speaking to the same very people that they came to bomb. So in this region, certainly that view is not looked at um, as, as a genuine, the, the whole truth. Okay, thanks very much for joining us. All right, thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.